Let's continue with uh, solutions to stoichiometry. And uh, we'll do a lot of solution stoichiometry, meaning calculations involving reactions and solutions. Those uh, calculations will typically follow a pattern in which you're given a volume and a molarity, uh, which will allow you to convert that into moles of one substance. You'll then convert moles of one substance into moles of another substance using a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And the mole-to-mole -mole ratio always involves the coefficients from a balanced reaction. From there, uh, you'll have an amount of a, another substance in the reaction, and you'll use the molarity to get back to a volume of a new substance, of that new substance. And here's a very typical example. Uh, what volume of 0 0.150 molar potassium chloride is required to completely react with 0 0.150 liters of 0 0.175 molar lead to nitrate. You'll note that we have a volume of molarity, so these two numbers are gonna be multiplied by each other. They're gonna be our A substance. And what I'll do is um, I'll convert for my lead to nitrate, instead of molarity, I know that molarity is really 0 0.175 moles of lead to nitrate. per one liter of solution. And I'll write it just like that in my picket fence. Like so. That way my units, my liters cancel. I know what I have moles of and I know that based on the balanced reaction, I need the one mole for my lead to nitrate for every two moles of potassium chloride. I know potassium chloride because that's what I'm being asked about. And I'll do something similar here for my 0 0.150 molar potassium chloride. I see that my moles of potassium chloride are on the top, so this time my molarity will be 0 0.150 moles of potassium chloride per one liter of solution. And so my molarity is upside down to get my units to cancel out, but it's still molarity and my units still cancel beautifully. Multiplying this out, I have 0.15 times 0.175 across the top times two divided by 0 0.150, 0 0.35, zero to three sig figs, liters. And uh, I'll be careful here. Uh, I do have two solutions. It is liters of potassium chloride solution that I'm looking for here. Very typical example of solution stoichiometry. Now, slightly different example, but still pretty similar, is going to involve uh, um, 43.8 milliliters of 0 0.107 molar HCl needed to neutralize some barium hydroxide what is the molarity of the base? So this time we're not asking for volume, we're asking for molarity. So I just wanna give myself a little heads up what we're looking for here. I still have my volume, this time in milliliters instead of liters. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it. Uh, three, eight liters, no, that's not right. Let me try that again. I know my milliliters. I know that to get to liters, there's one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. That's 10 to the three, so I'm gonna move my decimal point three places. That's better. 
zero point zero four three eight liters. So I've moved my decimal place three places. Zero four three eight liters. Of means multiply. My molarity for HCl is 0 0.107 moles of HCl. For one liter of solution. Then for every two moles of HCl, has to go on the bottom to get my moles of HCl to cancel out. I need one mole of barium hydroxide. And I don't have another molarity, so I can't set this problem up just like I did the last problem. Uh, I'm just gonna take a, a step back and I'm gonna go ahead and solve it like it is. I have my liters canceling, I have my moles of HCl canceling, and I'm left with my moles of barium hydroxide. That two is over there, there you go. And multiplying this out, I get 0 0.00234. to three sig figs, moles of barium hydroxide. But I'm asked for molarity, and now I have moles of barium hydroxide, and I have milliliters, which I can convert into liters. And so I can put those two together. So molarity of barium hydroxide is going to equal moles of barium hydroxide over liters of solution, or again, I will have to convert that to liters, 0 0.0376 liters. And then I multiply this out. I'm gonna go back to 0 0.00234 divided by 0 0.0376, 0 0.0622, Molarity, barium hydroxide. Now, these problems are closely related, but they ask for different things. Please be aware that you're going to do most of your stoichiometry, your unit conversions, on some type of picket fence like setup. Then you can put the pieces together in a slightly different order. Make sure that you always look back at the question and uh, make sure that you've answered it. We do a lot of these, so it's worth doing yet another one. This one uh, is the next level of problem. Uh, it says the following reaction is used to prepare hydrogen gas, where hydrogen is a product. What mass of hydrogen gas can be produced when 2.00 grams of magnesium are put into 100.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar HCl? we have enough information to determine the moles of magnesium and to determine the moles of HCl. That means two reactants, we can determine the moles. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a limiting reactant problem. And the way to read and identify a limiting reactant problem is that you have enough information to determine moles for two reactants. So I'm going to write enough info to determine moles for two reactants. And that's what we'll do. We'll take that information, we'll turn our grams of magnesium into moles. Uh, somewhere around here there's a periodic table. There we go. 
Magnesium, 24.30 grams of magnesium per one mole of magnesium. Then for every one mole of magnesium reacted, we will produce one mole of hydrogen. And then we're asked for mass of hydrogen. And in one mole, there are 2.016 grams of hydrogen. Let me set up the other one, then we'll come back and do the calculations. This time we have, let's do this one in green since I've started with some green already. We know the volume of HCl. We know that it's in milliliters, so we're going to convert it to liters. We know of means multiply. We convert 0 0.100 molar into moles of HCl per liter. There's a two to one ratio here, two moles of HCl for every one mole of hydrogen. And like always for the way I do it, the last step is the same for both of them. A little redundant perhaps, but uh, it's my method and I like it. Now let's multiply these two uh, sets of calculations out. 2 grams divided by 24.3 times 2.016. I get 0 0.166 grams of hydrogen. For the other one, 0.1 times 0.1 divided by 2 times 2.016. Nah, better just to start over. 0.1 times 0.1 divided by 2 times 2.016. 0 0.0101 grams of hydrogen. That is much smaller. It is always, in limiting reactant problems, the smaller amount that you can make. And so, what mass of hydrogen can be produced? This mass here. We also know that HCl, hydrochloric acid, is our limiting reactant as well.